Uh, beat beat D Scott by a second. Um, <clears throat> Bruce, now that you've uh, had a full year with with Mark playing for you, um, it seems like he's really bought into everything you're coaching from the play hard chart to everything. It kind of seems like the perfect player for you. Is that kind of the same way you you see things? Yeah, there's there's no doubt about that. He's been a you know one. He first of all he from day one, and I said this about all three of the uh, young men that came out of the the portal that they. They love being at K-State. They wanted to be here. They, when they got here, they embraced it. Uh, they've enjoyed it. They've made the most of the opportunity and, and including Mark. And, you know, my, my little bit of fear was, you know, he's an older guy. He had been in several programs. You know, you knew him, you recruited him, but until you coach him and you're, you're with him on a daily basis, you know, you don't know the, the, the personality and, you know, Coach Coach Martin had told me just, you know, a great young man and, and was going to work hard for you. And and he's even been beyond that. I, I think he just, uh, you know, and if you hear him talk, I got a text from a long text from his dad last night. And just appreciated, you know, the opportunity and, and what he's been able to do this year and, um, you know, how happy they are as parents that he's here and, and got this opportunity. And, uh, you know, so it, it – you know, I think Mark feels the same way. Uh, you know, we've talked from the beginning, you know, advance your game, uh, you know, which he's done. I mean, he, you know, from the obviously the rebounding, but the scoring, even assists at times, uh, you know, to play hard, he's, he's astronomically ahead of everybody else. Uh, but yet I, I think he can even get better. You know, I, you know, he's gotten better in the time that he's been here, uh, you know, and I, it's, you know, we're still trying to push him to get better. He, you know, I'm sure he wants to play and, and have that opportunity, but I know he wants to coach and, and he's embraced that. The, the other part, he's been a good teammate. He's, and he's been really coachable. You know, he was one of the first ones in here, you know, Wednesday morning and, you know, watched a whole film and, and took it, you know, you know, man, I, you know, and he, and he feels bad that he didn't play well. And that, you know, that's, you know, it's big time. It, it's been, it's been fun. You wish it was, you had another year with them, um, you know, but I just, I told his dad and, and his mom, you know, we just, you know, hope and pray he can have, he's been consistent. Hope he has a, a great finish to the season. And, 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 you know, so it's a, he has, you know, found memories of being here. And uh, you mentioned, you know, the possibility of maybe adding a game next week. Have you thought any more about that? What's your kind of opinion on that right now? Well, we, you know, we've been thinking about it for, I, I, I approached uh, Drew Spiro about, you know, a month ago, I said, Drew, start uh, going out there and uh, seeing who, um, you know, who didn't, who needs, still needs a game. And if there's anyone out there, and then we started looking at our schedule. I think our biggest, you know, I, I met with uh, Gene Taylor yesterday and Casey Scott and, you know, our biggest fear is, you know, we got to focus on the games at hand first, um, you know, to, to jam in another game next week would make it really tough. I think the, the one option maybe would be the Monday, you know, after Oklahoma, uh, if, if we can find somebody that fits the mold there, there's a new rule that was put in. Um, we thought maybe we could get somebody after their tournament and, and, that maybe they were going to play in the CBI or play in some, some event and they'd want a game. So maybe we could get somebody because a lot of, obviously a lot of the tournaments are starting next weekend, uh, but they put a new rule in in September. And I didn't even know it was there that you can't play a regular season game after your postseason tournament. So, so that puts another, uh, I guess, wrench into our, our, you know, our plan. So we'll see, we, we still are pursuing it. Uh, you know, right now the main focus is obviously getting ready for Iowa State and trying to win that game. Gotcha. And did, did anything stand out about you about the Cyclones the first time they played you? I know they threw that big man at you kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, Koontz had a, you know, really big game. We kind of, I guess we woke him up. He's kind of continued to play well um, since that time. They have really played well. They went three in a row since since our game. Um, had a uh, you know, a game the other night, probably one that, you know, maybe our game at their place, you wonder how you won. They probably wonder how they beat West Virginia, but they found a way to win it. They had their grind out um, road win at TCU where they, you know, made a play or two down the stretch, got shutouts. 
I, I just think they, they kind of got, uh, you know, they had a tough stretch uh, like everyone does in our league, uh, except, uh, you know, a few teams, obviously the, the elite teams, but uh, you, they've got a second win. They, they play with great energy. They, you know, Rockington, it's amazing how consistent he's been, um, you know, in, in making those shots. Uh, but I think the other, you know, probably beside their energy and their defense and how hard they play, you know, a couple of the other guys have stepped up, Kausher and um, Koontz, and, you know, those guys have stepped up and made some shots where when they were having their struggles, they were really struggling scoring. And now they're scoring the ball at a, at a much better clip. I, I saw their Oklahoma game I, at the couple games ago. It was they set a record or something for three point percentage or field goal percentage, something like that. So they've they've shot the ball really well, and they're they're playing with a lot of confidence. And and we're going to have to match that. I appreciate it, Bruce. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next question to D Scott. Yeah, my question was answered. Thank you. Uh, next question to Wyatt. Good morning, Coach. My question concerns Brockington and maybe just your theory on why he has had so much success. I know he's a really good mid-range shooter. What, why is it freedom that they've given him? Is it just a different style and programs? How do you see that? And are you surprised that there aren't more guys that are in that mid-range with the success that he's had in, in college <laughs> basketball? You know, I, and I'm a mid-range uh, fan. I, you know, I, I, I tell our guys all the time, watch the NBA playoffs. You know, so much is done in the mid-range when they start playing defense. You know, during the year, it's all the dunks and, and the three-pointers. And then you get to uh, the playoffs, especially deep into it, where they defend. And you got to make pull-ups. you got to be able to make that play. And, um uh, you know, it's, he's, he's amazing. I just said earlier, just his consistency at it. And he, it, it and it seems like the tougher the shot, the, you know, the, it's, you're, you're up on him, uh, the more success he has, or the more focus he has, uh, uh you know, the, as far as him, the, the system has been perfect for him. Uh, he's, he really cuts hard. I think why that's the, his biggest attribute and that that's, you know, that's old school. Um, you know, I, I, Obaji runs really hard. We were talking about the other day, I thought would be perfect for the Warriors because, you know, they run people off screens and, and he can, you know, you, you know, come off a screen and whether he jumps up and shoots it or gets to the paint, and, you know, not all teams do that. So um, in, in his case, it, they've set the system up for, for him. They have to cut, he cuts hard. They screen for them. They, it's, a, it's a little different. They, most people are ball screening. They're doing a lot of handoffs, and they, they have a handful of ways they, uh, to, to get it to them. They also have posted them up, and that's kind of – that's been something as of late. Uh, him, both him and culture, they, they've really done a good job getting them in the post, kind of playing a little bit of old-school basketball um, instead of – you know, and they'll make threes, don't get me wrong, but uh, – you know, they're relying on that cutting and movement and making you defend and then getting into that mid range and 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 posting up a little bit with with uh, playing with little, you know, with little guys inside. And you got to stay out in their big guys because they're handing it off and, and, and getting you in, a, in binds on that way. So, um, you know, kudos to uh, TJ and his staff to you know figure out a system that's that's been perfect for their guys right now. My perception, last question, is that in the last couple of weeks or so, your guys have been better rebounding the ball on both ends of the floor. Are you of that thought, or am I crazy there? Well, I think we have. I, I you know, I, I hope we have. I hate to even say anything because it <laughs> seems like once we plug one hole, then something else. Uh, part of it, why it is, you know, teams have shot so well against us that there aren't as many offensive rebounds. Um, I hate to bring that even up, but it's, it's probably a fact. And, but we have, we've gotten offensive rebounds. Our biggest thing is, is we got to get, we got to finish and take advantage of when we get second chance opportunities. I thought that was a, a big thing against Oklahoma state. You know, we only, they outscored us and we had double the offensive rebounds. I think something like that. We had more than they did. And, and they had eight to seven now against Kansas, 
you know, we end up 15 second chance points. Um, but obviously they shot the ball so well. So, you know, they didn't have that many opportunities to get, to get those second chance. Thank you. Yep. Uh, next question to Tim. Hey, Bruce, you, uh, you mentioned after the KU game that you weren't particularly pleased with, with practice heading into the game. I know you've, you've been able to have one practice since then. How, how did that go? And have you kind of noticed the an intensity at all kind of ratchet up as you kind of enter this, this do or die stretch here in the end? Yeah, you know, and I, and we've been so good. I meant, you know, I also said we've been so good in practice. They've been so focused. They've been so resilient. Um, you know, it, it is the dog days. You, you talk to any coach around the country, you, you got to keep your practices short. The problem is maybe you lose some of your habits because you cut out drills that, um, you know, that, that you, you, uh, you know, those are habit forming drills that, you know, the, the closeouts, things like that. We try to do a little bit of that, but, um, I think there's no doubt we played a lot of minutes. Our, some of our guys, when you know, combination of you know, one, it's gut check time. You want to win. We had Selton out. He's coming back. It, um, you know, it helps. Maybe you got another body that you can stick in there. Uh, you know, yesterday's practice was good. I tried to be. You know, first thing I said, who wants to be in the NCAA tournament? And and you know, they all jumped up and raised their hand. And I said, well, then we got to watch film and we got to take this. And we got to take this to heart and we got to change some of these things on the defensive end. Um, you know, we're going to work on some drills that are going to, you know, hopefully give us a chance to be ready for Iowa state. Um, you know, I, and they were good yesterday and we'll see how they are today. Hopefully the same, same intensity and same energy and same focus. And then bring that to the table on, on Saturday afternoon at one o'clock. Uh, go ahead, Grant. Hey, Coach. Um, I know Nigel took a took a shot to the hip during that Kansas game. I'm wondering um, how is he coming along after that? Well, we tried to keep him out of contact drills uh, yesterday. Um, you know, he did practice. He's been with Luke uh, Wednesday, I think, three times. Yesterday, you know, three times. Uh, just it's it's a bad uh, you know bruise on his on his thigh. Um, you know, we still got another 20, 36 hours or so, uh, continue with therapy. Hopefully it'll loosen up. We'll, we'll get them involved in a little live stuff today. I, at least I, that's my hope or plan. We'll have to see what Luke says. Um, but, and, you know, so yesterday's practice, we were down that body and then, uh, Luke, uh, caught the flu a little bit and so he couldn't go either. So, you know, best laid plans of, uh, you know, having a, a really good practice with a lot of bodies did not happen, but, uh, you know, hopefully Nigel, I, I know he, he, he'll, he'll be out there. I just hope he, and he would have kept playing, uh, on, on Tuesday night. We just didn't want to take a chance. Uh, you know, we, we, obviously we need him for this weekend. And once you got down, you know, in the double digits and, and they were, they were just cooking and, and, you know, we just felt it was better to get him out and, uh, you know, make, make sure we have them at least as healthy as possible on Saturday. And then I realized they probably won't see much rotational um, use, usage this late into the season, but what about guys like Siri Lewis and Maximus? How are their injuries coming along? You know, Max has been in practice for about a month now. Um, Obviously, we wish we had him. Uh, you know, it would he would help us. There's, you know, at least the physicality, the rebounding, he would bring to the table some of the stuff Mark Smith kind of has been giving us that undersized guy that that doesn't mind going in, getting you know, athleticism, getting to the getting to the boards, getting to the hoop, slashing. Uh, he's done a nice job, and uh, you know, he still we we still limit him. It's a couple of days on, a day or two off. You know, just because we got to make sure that he had, he had that same surgery twice and we can't let it reoccur. Um, Surrey has got, he actually leaves today to go back to Chicago to his doctor. Um, he has an appointment um, to uh, get, get a final, I, I don't want to say final release, but a release to do uh, more, um, you know, so you, what well, we went from August, um, I can't even tell you, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So we're on seven months. 
Um, you know, start, he started doing a little jumping, a uh, little bit of he He told Wyatt on the radio last night, he had to uh, learn how to run again. So, you know, and that, and it's the truth. I mean, you, you don't use those muscles to, and, and, you know, so he, he's gone, started doing that about two weeks ago, you know, sprinting up and down a little bit of jumping on some jump shots, no dunking yet, but uh, you know, hopefully gets a good uh, follow-up review and, and then can, start getting a little more involved in intense drills, uh, uh, you know, as, as we get into this last stretch of the season. And then I, I know you can't talk specifically about recruits, but, you know, you've been recruiting lately. Um, I want to know how that's been going and, and um, just uh, what, what official visits look like nowadays. Well, we get, we're actually going to have a young man in this weekend. Uh, you know, you're mixing in a little bit of um, some juniors and also some, you know, some uh, seniors. Um, you know, we, you know, we have one spot for sure. And, and you know, obviously with the portal, who knows what's going to happen with anybody. But, uh, you know, we it, we're continuing. All the coaches were out every day now. You know, January kind of set us back with COVID. Uh, no one, you know, we didn't get out almost at all, I think, until that last week. Um, because, you know, we obviously we were all sick and Jermaine was trying to coach by himself. So uh, not much opportunity to uh, get out and recruit. But, you know, this last month we've been out, and uh, you know, trying to get trying to see as many kids as we can. Well, next week we'll have a couple days probably where we'll get out to state tournaments are starting, uh, you know, the 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 uh, around the junior college tournaments will be starting. So we'll get a chance to see a lot of kids here. Um, hopefully the next couple of weeks. Thank you, coach. Yeah. Uh, back to Kellis. Hey, one more for you, uh, Bruce. I was thinking about this. The last two teams you played have uh, heated up from three against you, and that's been something you guys have been really good against yeah. prior yeah. to those two games. When you watch back on film, what, what was the difference maker in those ones? Well, you know, it, it's something that we, like you, you mentioned, we take a lot of pride in. Coach Lowry brought it up to the guys after we watched film yesterday that the, this last couple of weeks we've really slipped from being one of the top defensive teams, even the three-point we've slipped down. Um, you know, I, I think part of it is we've allowed people to get in the paint, and then once they get in the paint, they, you're, that's the easy threes, the kick-out threes uh, where you're squared up. And, and, you know, so I think that's the, we're, they're breaking our line of defense. I think that's the biggest thing we got to Mike McGurl texted me late the other night, just said, you know, coach, we got to, we got to man up and keep people out of the paint. And, and, you know, I told them all to watch the film because, you know, we went, I went recruiting Wednesday. They, I just said, Hey, you guys watch the film and you tell us what we think need to do. And, and that was his, it's a, it's the right observation. And, uh, got to little, be a little better on the ball so that we can keep people out of the paint. And and then we got to get the, the habit drills or the closeouts with hands. That's always been something we take a lot of pride in. Um, you know, you, you don't have as much practice time. Maybe they'll slip a little bit. So, uh, you know, they watched it yesterday. They watched it on their own. Uh, hopefully they can make that adjustment. And, uh, you know, we do a better job against them on Saturday and moving forward. All right, thanks, Bruce. Yep. Any other questions for Coach before we let him go? Going once, going twice. Okay. Coach, thank you for the time. I very much appreciate nice. it.